Welcome to this class on structural joints. This is session 10 in the KYTC Structural Inspection Level 1 class. Now, in this class, we're going to talk about two different types of joints. We're going to talk about construction joints in bridge construction, and then also expansion joints that are used in bridges as well. The expansion joints we're going to talk about are neoprene V-strips, pre-compressed foam hybrid seals, modular joints, and finger dams. A construction joint is a joint between different pores of concrete. This is a result when concrete is poured at different times and the pour is not continuous. This type of joint can be either longitudinal or transverse. You're looking at these joints in bridge decks, bridge walls, culvert walls, footers, so on. There's a lot of different joints in bridges. So the construction joints are shown in the plans or approved by the section engineer. These are used to facilitate construction sequencing. It may or may not require cork, which is a bond breaker. It should not and should never be in a tension area. If you put a joint in a tension area, it will crack and break. It shouldn't be within 18 inches of the face or the top of the structure and never between the diaphragm and the deck. Construction joints, uh, they can either be mandatory or permissible. We've got different options here. Uh, if you look at the top picture where it says section AA, that picture shows a cast in place wall and it has a mandatory roughened construction joint. You can see the circle there and the dotted pink line with the green arrow pointing to it. That is a mandatory roughing joint. So let's tell the contractor they have to pour the footer first, rough in the area where the wall is going to be, and then come back and pour the wall later. Down below in the red circle you see a permissible roughened construction joint. This is telling the contractor they can pour this with the diaphragm and the deck or they can pour it first. It's not required to have a joint there, but it is acceptable to have a joint. So culvert construction joints. If you see here, there's two different kinds. If you look at the bottom of this uh, footing and wall connection, you see a roughened construction joint. This roughened construction joint is just like we talked about earlier. They pour the footer first, and then they come back and pour the wall. In the area where the wall is going to be, they need to roughen it up. That way it's got a good surface area to get bond from that next concrete pour. The top one is a keyed construction joint. A keyed construction joint is where you take a 2 by 4 or some other material and place it down in the form to create that keyway. That keyway helps get a better bond with the top slab as well as keep water out. So other joints as you can see in this picture, you've got this vertical joint here which separates the wings and the diaphragm. You got this joint here which separates the diaphragm from the end bend itself and then you got this which is that permissible joint we were talking about for the wing and the bottom of the wing. These joints are necessary. I have seen where this joint was not put in, and within a couple weeks, the bridge had already made itself a joint by cracking right here. So keyways and water stops are ways we talk about to keep water out. We talked about having that keyed construction joint before, but as you can see here, they've got a water stop in here. That's another thing, just keep water from getting into this joint. And then over here, you've got keyed joints pier column that helps lock everything together. So in wall joints, if you've got barrier wall or a uh, rail system wall on your bridge, if you have to stop it and you have require a joint, make sure you've got your uh, smooth bar that's shown in the middle here. You've got to have some kind of commercial grade caulking, a chamfer strip, and a preform expansion joint material in the middle. As far as our walls go, you've got to make sure that the expansion material is nailed in. It will fall out if it's not nailed in. So different bridge deck joint types. There's phase construction joints. So that's what's in the middle. So you look at this bridge down the center line. Say you were building this bridge in two different phases. You would have this phase one, this phase two. There are also expansion joints, which are at the end of the slab or at a predetermined location. And then there's phased deck pours. So most of our bridges, you can pour them in one pour. 
but you get on some of the bigger ones or even some steel structures, you have to load them at a certain schedule. And that's what these phase deck pours are first. You pour phase one first, and then you come back and pour phase two. These are those tension areas we talked about earlier, the locations of negative moments. And there's also emergency joints. So you get into where something's broke down. Concrete plants broke, contractors' bid wells broke, something's broken, you've got to stop the pour. It starts raining. That needs to go in this area where one is. You do never want to put an emergency joint in a uh, negative moment or tension area. Here's a picture of a phased construction joint. So they've built phase one. You can tell that by the different color of the rebar. We talk more about this in the reinforcing steel class. You can go back and check that out for more information. That's why it's different colors. Uh, make sure some designers will call for this to be epoxied. Some will call for it to just be pressure washed. Make sure you read the notes in your uh, plans to understand what you have to do here for during construction. So here's multiple joints on two bridges coming together. You can see the armored edges with the Nelson studs, uh, the foam that is down below to make sure you have that joint all the way through the deck, uh, the tape on top to make sure you're not getting any co concrete down in that joint. Uh, just a lot going on here, but just make sure you understand what needs to go on with every joint, and each joint is different. So looking at pouring sequences, these are critical. So that's where we talked about the phased deck pours. Uh, if you've got a bigger bridge, the designer will put in a phased pour in there. If the contractor believes they can pour it in a one pour, that's fine, but they need to request that to the engineer of record. So that'll come into your engineer, which will come to central office, and we'll check with the engineer of record to see if it's acceptable to pour it all in one pour. It may be and it may not, but you cannot do it without the acceptance or approval from the engineer of record. So the reason they do phase deck placements, we kind of talked about it. This diagram shows you the positive and negative moments in a bridge. So normally you figure the loading would push down on the structure here where the blue shaded areas are and that results causes it to push up at the piers the red areas so we want to make sure we load the positive areas before the negative and you want or if you load it all at the same time you want to make sure that the structure the concrete sets at the same time so it's going to require a retarder be added to the concrete This is critical in steel bridges because the designer has to check to make sure the beams will be able to be stable during the pours. On steel bridges, the deck pour could be some of the worst loading area on the bridge itself. Once the concrete hardens and cures out, that becomes part of the structural member and stiffens it up even more. To make sure all this works, make sure you've got a good pre-pour meeting. We'll talk about that more on the concrete bridge decks video, but the pre-pour meeting is critical to make sure you understand everything that's going on during a deck pour, so that way you don't have any issues during that time. So now let's talk about different types of expansion joints that we use on bridge decks in Kentucky. We use a neoprene V-strip joint. So we're using these now to seal at the end of the bridge for little to moderate movement. Uh, these can be done in phase construction, don't cut them, but you make sure you see the backer rod goes in first. After you clean the concrete surface, you apply the first bead of epoxy on top of the backer rod. You install the V-strip seal, and then you apply the second bead of epoxy, and then press smooth the tool. Now, this class is not a installation video. This class is just for general knowledge. To find more information on how to install these V-strips, Make sure you look up the manufacturer's installation instructions. So here are some pictures of a V-strip by R.J. Watson. Here, this has already been cleaned. They've applied the backer rod. Step four on this picture is they're applying the uh, epoxy. And then they're applying the V-strip. Step six, they're coming back with the epoxy. And then step seven, they're smoothing that out. This is a standard drawing for joints. Uh, this is a good information, but as every joint is different, make sure you follow that joint. One of the biggest things about this drawing 
shows that we got to have the section through the barrier turned up. Got to have a maximum of a two inch clearance uh, turned up from the bridge deck. That's because we want to seal that joint. We don't want water running down the joint and then off the barrier wall down onto the pier or down on the indent because chlor water that is full of chlorides will eat away at concrete. So all right, back to this, let's look at the temperature change in increment video or picture. When you're setting these joints, you've got to make sure you take account for what temperature it is during the day. Because this concrete width is set at, the joint is set at 60 degrees. So as it heats up or cools off, you're going to have to adjust that width. So think as it heats up, the bridge gets longer, so your joint is actually going to be narrower. As it gets cooler, your bridge shrinks, so your joint's going to be wider. Make sure you take into account, and this chart gives you a temperature change increment. So you have to calculate that at what your anticipated pour time is for the day. The pre-compressed foam hybrid seal is getting used a lot today by bridge maintenance when we're going back in and uh, replacing joints. Uh, you have to prepare the joint interface just like you did on the B-strip. It must be completely dry before you apply the adhesive that is supplied with the joint seal. Then you install the seal and you apply and tool the silicone bead on top. Here's a picture of one that has been completed. You've got that nice little M effect to it on top. All right, then we get into our bridge joints for larger bridges. These are for ones that are long spans, 1,000 foot or more attributing to the movement. Uh, modular joints are used in seismic areas. These can kind of almost move in all three directions. You can move laterally, side to side. You can move back and forth longitudinally. Uh, these are a little more expensive. We have used these uh, down in far western Kentucky on the Kentucky Lake Bridge, the Lake Barkley Bridge, and the Tennessee River Bridge on I-24. Uh, these are a little more expensive, but they do work if you're in a seismic area. Make sure you follow your notes and plans and how to install them. Last but not least are finger dams. These are for real long bridges. Um, these account for four inches of movement or more. As you can see, the fingers kind of interlock together. And as it expands and contracts, those fingers just move in and out. It keeps it sealed up. And then to keep the water off the bridge, you can see the trough in the picture on the right. That kind of water falls down into there and it goes into a drainage system that drains off the side. Here's a picture of a finger dam that's getting installed during construction. And that is it for this video on structural joints. I hope you've enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Uh, I hope you come back for another class. Check out some of our other videos. Uh, if you have questions, leave it in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, and have a great day.